located and um, basically all the vicinity we have just covered here by bus. This is of course former East Berlin and uh, it's hard to tell now 25 years later because there's been so much construction going on, so much renovation um, that in many ways even the locals you know, if you just put them out in the street uh, and you said, so tell me, where are you? East or West Berlin, can you tell? There used to be a time when you could tell because East Berlin used to be a lot more grayish, um, um, dull, um, uh, quieter, less cars, no trees. Um, by the way, look right and left, this is a street without trees, which is still a pretty decisive um, sign of telling between East and West. Um, with the West Berlin government made sure that all the streets would be supplied with ample trees, um, quite a number of trees that they wanted to have in the streets and make Berlin a place where you could go for recreation, uh, you know, and especially during the first years when the wall was up, it wasn't really sure how long special laws were enforced of uh, making it impossible for West Berlin. And I was going to drive real slow here. And if you look to your left, you see those um, uh, spears sticking out of the snow, looking rusty uh, like a fence. This used to be the old wall. And we are driving on the western portion of Berlin. You are looking towards the east on your left-hand side. So in Bernauer Straße was one of the places where the wall really cut through a resident quarter and literally through your living room. And what happened was that um, the wall that you see here, or the remnants of it, um, there were all houses in the 60s. And literally, when they designed the wall, when they decided where it would run, they didn't go by streets, and they didn't go carefully through bigger streets or something like that. No, they took a pen, drew it over the map, and they went literally through churches, through living rooms, through houses. And then eventually, these houses were blown up uh, and, you know, taken down, stuff like that. So, which is why we have a pretty much empty site here on the... Um, empty side on the left hand side and um, because the street has such a rich history of tragic stories of escapes um, we um, built the wall memorial right here and we're going to use our early start for our first picture taking stop and so please take your cameras and follow me for about 15 minutes
of a very sure sign for uh, new people to Berlin to tell, am I east or west? So tram lines and streetcars means you're in East Berlin. So right and left, what you see is a uh, collection of different uh, building styles with the houses. Um, Again, Berlin, of course, is about 800 years old. Uh, dates back to the 13th century and was uh, first mentioned in the records in 1247. So we are approaching our 800th anniversary. Uh, among European cities, we, we are very young. Um, but we have seen a lot of history and we have seen a lot of destruction. And what you see nowadays is just remnants and a um, plethora of mementos of these times. Um, lots of um, building styles, leftovers and stuff, and we're going to talk about this. In front of us, uh, hard to see, a uh, little foggy and uh, covered in white clouds is the TV tower. Uh, and as many other things in Berlin, we have a lot of stuff twice or even three times. Um, so there is a TV tower in the east, there is one in the west. Um, the TV tower in the east in front of us is the one that has been the way they dressed. But very quickly, um, these Jews became very successful in German society. Uh, once more ahead of us is the TV tower, now better to see. Um, with a, an East German, well, high-riser in front of it. Um, and most of these Jews that came out here of this Jewish quarter uh, made a career in Berlin as publishers, as doctors, as lawyers, um, museum collectors, uh, it, people interested in higher education, fine arts, um, philanthropy, once they got a little richer. Um, so the Jewish minority of Berlin um, has really uh, given a lot to the city of Berlin, and Berlin benefited from taking a lot of these Jews in, in the 17th, 18th, 19th century. Um, and uh, the Jewish enlightenment here in Berlin was introduced with Moses Mendelssohn, who is also buried here in the Jewish quarter. Um, actually at the oldest Jewish cemetery that was desecrated during the Third Reich. He no longer serves as a cemetery, but there is a historical marker for Moses Mendelssohn at that place. In front of us with uh, the little, well, it looks like a steeple and the flag is waving is the city hall of East Berlin, so to speak. Now it used to be, it, it, it now is the city hall of reunified Berlin. Um, Berlin, um, as of 2001, uh, is made up of 12 districts, but when it was originally founded, uh, it consisted of 29 cities, um, a couple of um, communities, and about 17 uh, landed estates. So it's a fusion, really, of a lot of these entities. Uh, the, the great fusion of uh, all these entities happened in 1920. They formed Greater Berlin, and each district has a city hall. And this red brick city hall that we see here to our right-hand side uh, was built by Wesemann but during your American Civil War between 1859 and finished in 69, so 10 years ago. Um, and the first Berlin City Council met there in June 1865. Um, it used to be the city hall of East Berlin only from 1956 to 1990, and since 1991, it's the governing mayor of Berlin, and this is Michael Miller of the <laughs> Party. The St. Mary's Church to our right here is a little lower on the ground. You have to actually have to use stairs to get to the entrance. And why is that? Because the church here is the oldest Christian church of Berlin, still in service, first mentioned in 1292. And what you see today was remodeled in the 1970s. Uh, it is 1.5 meters below Berlin's surface, 
and layers of dirt uh, are, of course, the results of two world wars. So this is why the rest of Berlin is much higher up, and you have to use layers to get down to the East Germans. Um, a lot of things ha have changed, um, not just construction-wise, but if you go to a grocery store, a department store, you look at the labels, uh, how many East German products do we still have on the shelves, um, stuff that they had gotten used to, that they were looking for, that they are now missing. Um, on the other hand, they have, of course, received a large variety of goods, and uh, this whole um, unlimited world of uh, fr uh, a free market opened up to them, but the question is if everyone wanted that. Um, so it was not that easy for them, and uh, one of the early jokes uh, after reunification was that the East Germans said, we used to line up for six hours uh, to receive oranges or bananas during GDR times, and now it takes us about six hours to figure out where's the store with the cheapest offer, because they had to learn that in free market economy, you can offer goods at different prices at different stores, and if you went shopping in the GDR, all the stuff was priced the same, whether you bought this in Leipzig, Rostock, Berlin, Dresden, no matter what, no matter what store. The question in the East was, would they have the goods you wanted? But it was never a matter of price. Um, so in that respect, this has changed for, well, this was one of the biggest changes for the East Germans, to grow accustomed to our kind of economy. And of course, another thing was to uh, also plan your finances and not to get into debts. And that's what was a word that East Germans were not familiar with. So here we come uh, to the backside of the Berlin City Hall on our right hand side, and then there is a church with a steeple. This the Nikolai Quarter, which is the oldest part of the core part of Berlin, East Berlin. Um, this part was remodeled for Berlin's 750th anniversary by the East German government. And some other heads of state from the Eastern Bloc countries were invited to join the festivities. They were driven by Volvos, the Swedish car brand, uh, through this little quarter. And it was a little bit like showing them the Potemkin village because everything else in East Berlin, as the East German capital, was falling apart in 1987. But only this little tiny quarter here now to our left-hand side um, had seen some paint, had been restored, privileged apartments here. It's, it's a residential area, so you can own a, an, an apartment or even for rent and live inside the Nikolai Quarter. It's now a very touristy section, and if you walk inside, and it's, uh, by the way, pedestrians only, um, you do feel like Berlin in the 19th century. So if you it's worth it to scroll through there. It's very tiny. It's very neat. It's a maybe the Berlin version of uh, what Charleston, South Carolina, is like a walking place, looking very much like 19th century, um, with a church with a couple of uh, free of entrance museums showing you the lifestyle of Berlin in the 19th century, the Knoblauch House, and other places. Uh, from 